Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. Very excited with a special guest to talk about a very special topic in terms of licensing for music and artists there. So without further ado, I'd like to bring to your attention and our guest, Aaron Green of Easy Song Licensing, which can be found at easysonglicensing.com. But Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Kevin. Thanks for the opportunity. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to have you today. I, I've learned more and more about uh, Easy Song licensing over the years, but I uh, really want to have a candid talk to let our viewers learn more about what you guys actually do. But yeah, I mean, could you start by describing exactly what your company is and what you guys do? Absolutely. Yeah, EasySongLicensing.com is a third-party music licensing agent. Uh, kind of like a broker for music rights. Anything less to do with intellectual property with the song compositions owned by a publisher, or if you're using um, audio or master sound recording owned by a record label. I mean, we help clients, uh, in independent artists, businesses, churches, schools, 501c3s, you name it. You use music that you, you didn't write, we help clear it. <laughs> Yep. Awesome. So from your site and even just, uh, it seems like you guys have a, a number of different services uh, that you guys uh, jump into. So could you tell us a bit more of, since more of our audiences is artists, you know, uh, what they could tap into from a, a scope of that if they needed help with? Absolutely. Um, we actually, uh, we have lots of good partners, but one of our biggest partners is CD Baby largest independent music distributor in the world. And they have over a million indie artists. And we, we um, partnered with them about six years ago. And we went from about 10,000 users to about almost 120,000 users today. Really proud of that number. But uh, mainly I mean, what we started out doing with music rights is what we call mechanical song licensing. I'm sure your audience knows something about this or maybe plenty about it. Uh, but uh, this is through our clear cover songs portal on our website. And a mechanical license is if you want to release your own audio only product, private listening to the end user, and you want to put this on an album with compositions or music you didn't write. Mechanical song licensing enables you to do that with physical media, digital downloads. You know, you're talking audio only. That's a huge part of our business. And again, that's for straight cover recordings. You didn't add or change lyrics, same melody, didn't add original composition. There's no master sound right. recordings that you're using in your track. That's just right. for standard straight covers. Nothing funky, okay. nothing different about it. Another part, a really big part of our company is what we call custom licensing. And uh, okay. I developed this about five years ago where we secure rights where special permission is needed from a songwriter administration or the publisher and uh, again, record labels for master rights. And this deals with video synchronization with internet streaming. You're talking any, anything that, that deals with internet streaming rights, DVD, film. Uh, we, we get lots of independent filmmakers. We get lots of 501 C threes doing charities and things like that. Um, and or independent artists that are maybe meshing together two songs or they want to add original composition or do a derivative, anything that needs special permission. We work with over 8,000 publishers where we have, you know, warm paths to resolve virtually any request. Now, can't guarantee permission, but we definitely put our people in the in the best position to succeed and we work with all the majors, so we can tell you the vibe. We screen these requests. Just a really good big brother, big sister to the industry. We like to be, we believe in music karma, where yeah. <laughs> just because I'm not making money off of you doesn't mean that we can't help. And at least you know what you can do, what you can't do, and even help plan for future projects. So it's not always about money. It's about education, you know? <laughs> Right, right. Would you say like, and you bring up an interesting topic about an artist, maybe not making money, right? Would you, what would you say to an artist who's like that mindset? I'm not making money right now. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to put it out, like see what happens. If someone, you know, if it blows up, maybe then uh, I'll deal with it. But uh, what would you say to that artist thinking like that? Like if you're talking about if they're maybe changing lyrics or they're drastically mm -hmm. changing the melody, they're kind of taking their own left turn. Yeah, 
Right. I mean, as a third party, I mean, we're not, we, we have fantastic legal counsel here, but we are not mm-hmm. lawyers, so we can't give legal advice. All we can do is tell you right and wrong. Uh, I mean, all I tell, I mean, it's up to the rights holders to enforce, but at the end of the day, it's about respect. Um, right. Most independent artists we work with write their own music. And right. I, you know, it's kind of that gold golden rule cliche is corny and, you know, and cliche that it is, but it's about respect. And even if you're making money or not, that composition is sacred to those. I mean, again, even if it's owned by Sony, the largest publisher in the world or Warner mm-hmm. Universal, you know, something like that. Again, it's not, I mean, again, I, I can make a significant offer to a major songwriter camp, but at the end of the day, they're going to tell, it's not always about the um, your client or the right. independent artist. It's about what have they approved in the past? What's the market value set at it? And again, it's our job to make sure you and the other indie artists come across as harmless as possible, you know? Right. But again, it's what have they done in the past? What what have you done to the composition? What are the approval parties' policies? So there's a lot of variables involved in here. We have, outside of having our black book of contacting any type of publisher, we, we already kind of know a lot of policies, but at the same time, it's like a dice roll and we're very upfront with our customers. So we'll add, we'll do a free copyright holder search. We'll analyze the list and I'll let you know, like if you want to change lyrics to a stones or Beatles song, probably not a great idea, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, right. but if you're a major artist in your own right, and sometimes it is like an audition, everyone thinks they have the next best cover or this is going to be really good for the stones catalog or something like that. Sometimes right. you have some diamonds in the rough and you, or you have significant artists or, you know, they're they're backed by a pretty reputable label or something like that. That can talk and then they'll listen to it. And again, we just try to make sure we highlight those strengths and shine and try to work out a deal where all sides are happy. But yeah. Right, right. No, that makes sense. Especially because if an artist is up and coming, independent, they don't have those contacts that uh, you guys probably have, right? So I see that as being something very valuable for sure. But yeah, talk to, because we're kind of dipping into that copyright aspect of things as well, which I know is always uh, an interesting topic to tread uh, through. Do you guys provide copyrights per se, or is that something you guys are uh, branching into at all? Yeah. (laughs) Kevin, fantastic segue. Uh, (laughs) It's like we planned (laughs) this before, but uh, yeah, we actually are (laughs) launching. This is very exciting for our company. This is almost a decade in the making. Uh, We've had clients for many years cry for this type of service, but we're going to be opening up our new publishing administration division this summer um, called Easy Song Publishing, ESP. (laughs) Cool, cool, nice. And it's a whole new way. We're actually overhauling our whole website and we're offering for people who write original compositions and want to get them registered. And um, also not just with like ASCAP, BMI or all, PROs, performing rights organizations throughout the world. Uh, we've scored some very key partnerships to help us with that. Just so your, your music Thanks. can show up in all databases, you can get public performance royalties. We have those connections, mm-hmm. so we're going to be introducing that to our users, but also helping with U.S. copyright registration, like in the U.S. Copyright Office. Um, right. Again, this is this is a service where we're not going to be, you know, obviously our clients will own all intellectual rights, but again, um, just for a you know a, an industry expert that can really knows what they're doing to register in the right place is also to represent you not necess- not not your lawyer not your legal counsel but um, I do right. over the last couple of years we do a lot of brokering work where an independent artist has an indie filmmaker or Netflix Netflix came calling or there's a special project right. that came up and they want to use their song. And and, and we already work with a lot of artists and they're like, Aaron, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me out? Or I run this YouTube store and people keep wanting to use my masters. I don't own the composition, but they love my jazz or blues or rock or hip hop version of this song. Aaron, can you help broker the rights? So I step in, I make sure we get all project, extract all project details um, and we get fair market value and we get, get these artists paid. It's a big deal. And so that's going to be turning into a full out operation in addition to mechanical, in addition to custom. So it's really like your Swiss army knife where it's not just cover songs, it's all original compositions. So pretty exciting. Right. That is awesome. Yeah. You guys are covering the whole gamut of things for sure. Now, I guess the topic that 
artists always, you know, come down to is, you know, costs, right? Uh, so I know that we went through a, a whole list of things. I'm not necessarily looking for the rundown of your price list, but is there a situation where you guys are more treated as a service and that here's the X, you pay X and that's, we're doing a service for you? Uh, or is there also like a commission tacked on that uh, we're doing this for you? Any success you might have, we're also taking a percentage of that. How does that kind of play out? Yeah, yeah, Kevin. It sounds like um, yeah, in our custom licensing division, and you can, by the way, you can see that this is all displayed on our website. So at the top, easysonglicensing.com, clear, uh, clear cover sun for standard mechanical, custom licensing mm-hmm. for everything else. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. so we offer two different services. One's called custom assistance. One's called custom handling. Um, custom okay. assistance is for one twenty nine, and that's where we actually break down a whole roadmap for the client. Like we're giving inside publishing contacts from any any publisher and we give them the forms the strategy that go through everything they would need to set them up this is very sensitive and valuable information but the right. even and, but again that's as far i mean i help coach from the sidelines my team helps but we're not the ones actually submitting the request that one is gotcha. less popular than our other where you can imagine this is called custom handling kind of like yeah. in the product title we do all the heavy lifting and we're the ones that um, analyze it, analyze the project, extract all details that we need. We screen it to make sure, okay, this is the media rights that you're going after. This is the term you're going after. This is the music use. Okay, these are the approval parties. Let's try to synchronize. Let's try to marry, marry all these concepts. Okay, do you have the budget for Sony? Or, no, this right. is a small mom-and-pop shop publisher. We might be able to get this for free. This is my strategy. So we'll screen these requests. We're very hands-on. You get your dedicated okay. agent. So custom handling is for one seventy nine, and we do make a thirty percent commission on top of any agreed rate you decide to move forward with. Now, again, gotcha. this is something where we are. I mean, even though we're from Minnesota, Minnesota nice. We're very Brooklyn direct. Okay, <laughs> right? yeah. That's a compliment to New York, where we, yeah. we get right to the point. And we tell them, okay, Sony, you want a you want a one year term. It's going to cost X if they approve. If you don't have the budget, let's stop the process now. Or right. okay, this is Universal and Warner. You're doing something very simple on a social media platform. There's no branding in the footage. Like you're not promoting a product, a service, or it's just your music performance. Are you charging right. to access the video? Where is this going to be organically upload? What term of use do you want? So. We take all that, and sometimes it's just asking for gratis and free. Sometimes they just accept. But if you're going to go after like a Taylor Swift, Bruno Mars, if you're like Cardi B, I mean, I mean, if you're if you're going after a Mount Rushmore, it's it's you know you get what you pay for, kind of. But right. again, there's so many variables involved. There's some major artists that are very comfortable with cover versions. There's some that are not, and again, some that's like an audition. So they got to hear your stuff, and I got to make sure you shine. So. We got to paint this canvas and I got to paint a Picasso each time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's not, I'm assuming every situation is probably unique uh, in its own right, depending depending on the parties you're dealing with on both sides. So, um, but yeah, I, I can see how that would be very helpful, obviously, depending on the artist and what you're trying to go after. I know I felt feel the questions of people trying to say, I have this, I'm trying to do this. Uh, where do I start? And I think that's, it's a tough question to answer sometimes. And I've obviously, uh, I see how this can come in handy for uh, artists, you know, from all different aspects there for sure. Yeah. Did you have something else to. Well, what I was going to say is yes. Yeah, step number one, you can talk to us. We're extremely accessible. Uh, Eight to four central time. We actually have our phone number. We have a 1-800 number in the upper right hand corner of our screen. Um, you right. can email us. I mean, I mean, I, I, I have a fleet of what we call our our uh, music rights Navy SEALs. And I, <laughs> I have a fantastic team here. Some very, very talented individuals. And they really do right. make our company run. Um, and uh, we're speed sales. It's kind of a game. When someone emails, we email back fast. When someone calls, there is no secretary. You get a live agent. You call between here. If you if if all phones are jammed, we, we have plenty of agents, but if all phones are jammed, we call people back. Like we're we are religious about customer service and speed. You can check out our Facebook page with Easy Song mm-hmm. Licensing and our Google reviews. 
I mean, right. the proudest is when they mentioned agent by name. This was done fast, efficiently. They told me it's going to be really expensive and impossible to do, but I got my answer today. Or right. now they taught me to be type A. Now we're going to help plan out a project before we invest 5, 10K in the studio. Producers aren't always going to give you the skinny on music rights. They're experts in their own right. But anybody telling you when you change lyrics or you're messing with a composition or you're making, you're advertising your business, you need permission for it. It's U.S. copyright law and you've got to, you know, right. edu- educate, not litigate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. And, and, and to that point of everyone is their kind of experts in their own right. Uh, and you guys are really focused in on that area. So that does make sense to me. And now even adding the copyright side of things, I think that's just another boost altogether, kind of the one stop shop in that area. Now, for people who know of like the Harry Fox agency, how do you guys kind of differ from that service or pro- uh, company essentially? Yeah, HFA uh, has been around forever, pretty much since <laughs> U.S. copyright law. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> they they mainly deal with mechanical licensing um, with the publishers that they represent. Um, they okay. also serve as kind of an international um, uh, uh an international base for whenever other countries like, uh, like other songs, like let's just say in the UK or France or any other country, and they don't necessarily have a U.S. publisher. So there's performing rights organizations in Europe or, you know, anywhere throughout the world, they work with Harry Fox to register and represent mechanical rights. And just to have kind of a public record, it serves a very good purpose. I mean, I mean, we also handle, um, mechanical royalties but again we but the custom permission where we actually go out and broker and actually clear rights and actually like in the summertime that's where that makes us a little more unique uh, but i mean harry fox we have a lot of respect for uh we live in harmony and I, we, we work alongside in some capacities with them but again right. they only represent a certain amount of publishers um under u.s compulsory law if the if the client qualifies for u.s compulsory we have the right Assuming we have a U.S. right representative, we can issue U.S. compulsory mechanical licenses. You know. Gotcha. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I guess doubling back to what we were talking about on the custom side, obviously, if you guys clear it or, you know, make broker that deal, then that's awesome. What is the situation if, you know, it doesn't happen? What as an artist, what do I walk away from with that situation with? Yeah, so again, um, we, this is not only when you sign up for custom licensing, but we put this in writing email. We talk about it over the phone. We also have an extra attachment. This is before any work has been done, but you are okay. paying a service fee. As a third party, when anybody starts speaking on behalf of a publisher about this is what I think is 100% certainty, that scares me. There are competitors and there's agents, there's people out there that do this kind of thing. I would rather... Mm-hmm. If I see a project or any of my people see a project and like, for example, uh, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, um, Mm -hmm. it's a very it's a it's a request or over the rainbow. These are two hallmarks, cornerstones of Sony's catalog. Very, very high respected writers, songwriter camps. Huge, huge. Someone's going to change lyrics to it. We're not taking that job on. We know it's going to be a zero tolerance policy. We will send that money back. We will actually lose the credit card transaction fee through PayPal or through our merchant. And that's okay. They just know that we're straight shooters. But again, the one thing I tell people is that when we clear rights, this is a privilege. This isn't a right. This is like having, you don't have to have a driver's license, but you have to go b- abide by it. And again, at the end of the day, that songwriter camp can say yes or no for any reason that they want if special permission is needed. If they don't like how they're being represented, or they have an exclusivity with with another third party, or mm-hmm. again they um, you you may not have the full out budget like we estimated. There's going to be two fifty five hundred. Sony comes back and said that's going to be more than that. Now after many years and thousands of requests, you know you I mean again we get to a point where we can get very close. And and again this is our commission. This is your budget. Do you have this to work for this? Or I have to get creative. I know you wanted a year. But Sony might charge like 500 or a grand for a full one-year term for internet streaming on these five, six, seven websites you want to post on. 
Maybe we want to short that to a three month or a six month. But let's just say something gets denied. It gets denied for some reason. There's a variety of reasons why it might. And again, there's a lot of reasons why they get approved too. But at the end of the day, I mean, we'll always say, well, do you have any other songs? Do you have a plan B? Or the, the peace of mind I give clients is next time you plan out a project, next time you do this, hit me up. Let's, let's, let, let, let's work it out together. you got a friend for life. We are a third party. We're probably the best shot that any indie artist. And I mean, there's a whole fleet of entertainment lawyers that use this on the ground floor and they'll charge right. the clients a lot more than what we charge. Again, they serve obviously right. a fantastic purpose, but um, again, there's a variety of reasons why people get denied. Uh, but again, for standard covers for standard uses or a virtual choir, stuff like that, there's a lot of approvals that come through the door and it just comes down to what all a song, is it one song in the same video or are there lots of songs in the same video? So if there are right. lots of songs, they all have to cooperate under what we call MFN, most favored nation race. Mm. And this is something gotcha. with that mainly deals with major publishers. Whenever, whenever they say yes to anything, they'll always say MFN with all other songs in the project, meaning all songs need to be equally compensated and the highest bid wins out across the across the board. Now, right. these are major publishers. Minor, smaller publishers don't necessarily do this. It's more of a custom negotiation. I can kind of, um, you know, pull up my sleeves and maybe lowball. Or I mean, I, I'm, I'm here. If, if the if the artist tells me they have five hundred bucks and I see a small publisher, I'm going to ask for gratis or a very bottom level fee. Again, commissions are fine, but at the end of the day, I'm going to score more clients and retention if I get things done for right. free, cheap pricing. I mean, it's, again, music karma. So um, <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing I will say about that is even if something gets denied, let's just say everything gets shot down. Um, what I tell mm -hmm. people, obviously, we can take alternative songs. Do you have a plan B? Let's look at it. Let's go after it. But beyond this project... Just because you you decided know, for custom handling or custom assistance once, people hit me and all my agents all the time about planning out future projects. So you got a friend for life who knows what they're doing. They know the vibe of all rights holders. So it's a nice lifeline. It's a nice big brother, big sister to kind of lean on for any type of question. So that's always nice peace okay. of mind. And we deliver. Again, we're here to help. <laughs> That's that's great. That's great. Yeah, because I I could see I could think of so many ideas that someone is just you know an idea comes to their head. Oh, I, I'm gonna I want to use this song. I'm probably submitting that. It you know you just never hurts to ask. And I think that it, it, you could probably have a lot of maybe services that would be a bit shady and I'll just take your money. But I really like respect the fact that you guys are you know opening that dialogue and, and making that relationship in a sense moving forward. But yeah, is there any myths that you would say you'd want to debunk or uh, about your company and Easy Song licensing? Or, I mean, th th I mean, th there are plenty of myths about fair use. Or <laughs> I'm just using five, ten seconds of a master in my clip, or, or uh, you know, or, or I'm I'm just doing this kind of thing. I'm like, at the end of the day, anybody can take legal action against anybody else for any amount of use. And again, it's about respect. Right. Sometimes it's asking if it's a major label. There's, I mean, again. This is something where we'll, we'll, all we can do is provide options, the approval parties. But again, you're using someone else's composition. The, the fair use point, if you're a journalist, you're a news anchor, you're reporting the news, you're doing something like that, okay? Educational use, it's inside an accredited scholastic classroom, okay? Right. Um, but it, it depends on what you're doing in there. But again, will publishers come and get? I mean, I can't speculate what they're going to do. But when people say, well, it's my freedom of speech, I'm like, one right does not parlay into another right. We still are protected by U.S. copyright laws. Again, you have to ask. That's their intellectual property. What's interesting is that people don't look at music rights the same way they look at buying, like, a nice new Mercedes or BMW or a Cadillac or something like that or going to, going to a grocery store and stealing some milk and bread and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, that, that that's like a point-blank crime. They're like, oh, it's just music rights, that kind of – what I'm here to say is that you have no idea how many, uh, uh, any top 40 song and billboard in any decade has produced so much money and clearances for so many decades. There's a market value. This is very valuable pieces of property here. Um, and right. again, they take this very seriously too. So again, no. depends on what you're going after, but you got to respect the rights. And sometimes it's a matter of, well, 
maybe we shouldn't just do this on Instagram or TikTok or Twitch, or maybe we shouldn't do a parody or change lyrics. Maybe we want to stick to YouTube and we offer the YouTube link to that publisher, see if they want to claim all monetization. And then maybe you can avoid a formal sync fee or an agreement. It doesn't always work out that way, but there's things that we can do so we can get creative. I don't want to mess with your art, but let's talk about media rights and where it's going. And maybe we can find a good shoe to that, that will fit. (laughs) Right. Right. No, that makes sense. With, regards to this uh, i'm not too sure is there anything we've missed that we should have asked you or hey, keep creating um the pandemic has been very interesting since march 2020 uh we've actually experienced a spike i mean we were busy before but people are are putting out content it's a beautiful thing um we're seeing mm-hmm. some very powerful songs like there, there's some really i mean again there's there's some things that are getting licensed and publishers have been a little more receptive and They've come down in some pricing and they want to help choirs and indie bands or college kids just making a record and things like that. Um, Keep creating, keep talking about it, keep asking. The creative juices keep flowing. And it's just it's it's, it's the one silver lining I've seen from the whole pandemic and everything is that if people are stuck at home, they're pushing content out. They, you know, so again, they can talk to us about it. And again, what's something that might seem impossible may not be that impossible. And again, we'll hold your hand the entire way because music rights, this is a complicated jungle. <laughs> and we got a machete to slice through that jungle. And the number one thing I always tell people is no such thing as a dumb licensing question. It's it's complex, you know? Right, <laughs> right, right. And at the end of the day, I get the moral of the story is just ask because uh, you guys are there to help. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense to me. So it's been an amazing chat today and i wish we could go longer but yeah i thank you aaron for joining us today again that's easy song licensing.com i think that be a great help for a lot of artists and um i appreciate your time today once again oh kevin thank you for the opportunity i got a outstanding vibes i can tell why you have your own show this is love, love your <laughs> questions man this is <was> fun <laughs> awesome appreciate it